This podcast is brought to you from Grantwood AEA, an educational service agency that supports school districts in eastern Iowa with a focus on equity, excellence, and efficiency in education for all children. Welcome to episode 62 of the EdTech Takeout, the podcast that serves up bite-sized technology tips for teachers. My name is Jonathan Wiley, and I'm joined, as always, by Mindy Carney. <laughs> to see it that way, like, as always. I'm afraid I still have Mindy Carney yeah, as my co-host. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no one else wants to work with you, so. <laughs> That's what I hear, yes. <laughs> All right. How are things? Good. Busy. Busy, yes. Busy. We just had the Building Bridges yes. uh, conference yesterday, mm-hmm. so yep. I'm a little tired from that. But Yeah, it was really good energy yesterday, so um, if you're interested in Building Bridges, it's usually held like the second week, third week of April, somewhere in there, and it is all about UDL and accessibility and um, lots of great conversations yesterday, I think, mm. so. We could probably post a link to the show yeah. notes of resources and the yeah. kind of sessions that people shared yeah. and talked about. Because all of those resources are... are on their site yes. somewhere. So, yeah. Yes. Did you put that all together? No. Oh, wow. How'd you get out of that? No one asked you. Nobody asked me. <laughs> oh, lucky you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So news and follow up is google today. It is. It's just yeah. a big bunch of Google yeah. updates today because yeah. there has been a lot since the last time we talked. Yeah, right. And Google had some conference type deal called Google Cloud Next 19. Yeah. Which I don't know anything about. I but don't either. I've never even heard of that before. Is this a new? No, is because it, I looked it up and there's, there's, there's references for Next 18 and Next 17. Okay. So it's, uh, I think it's when they look at their cloud platform and think about what's new and what's coming next and... They announced some stuff. Yeah. So. Some of which we know a lot about. And, and some, some of which we know nothing about. We don't know much about at all. So the first one you have on the list is interesting to me because it's automatic live cop- captions in Hangouts. Hangouts meet. Hangouts meet. Yes. Okay. So what's what's Hangouts meet? Hangouts meet, I believe. Do we know what that is? I think we that's. We don't use Hangouts, so. I think it's the new name for like the 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 video conferencing video chat thing. they just call yes. it so because they've hangouts meet and they have hangouts chat right so i think this is interesting because we use zoom a lot here at yes. the agency and we've been having some discussions about um using zoom and they don't have closed captioning as an option except if you type it live right isn't that how it works with Zoom? So I think it's interesting to be able to have closed captioning with your with your video conferencing live without actually having to type it in. Yes, and I was showing people yesterday as part of the conference yeah. um, the closed captions inside of Google Slides. So yeah. I didn't. It's the same um, tech, right? I mean, it's the same yeah, tech. Right. They're just porting it over to the video conferencing, yeah, which is good. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So good to have. Good for more accessibility for sure. And hang out. Meet now is in Jamboard. Yes. So you can video conference and jam at the same time. That's what it's called. It's called a jam. Don't give me that look. I like it. Start a jam with your start yeah. a jam on your jam board. Yeah. I haven't ever seen a jam board in real life. Have you seen one? Not like the actual physical board. Yes. Right. Just use the app yes. for different things. Right. But yeah, I think that's a, a useful option to have. You can collaborate on that space together and see the other person too. That's nice. I like that a lot. Hmm. I like. I really like Jamboard a lot. It's one of my new favorite Google tools. Jamboard is one of your favorite yeah. Google tools. It's one of my new favorite tools. I feel like it's underutilized, or people don't use it, or know about it. It's a good one. Okay. Okay. I get that. All right. Um, I don't under. Okay, so Hangouts Chat is replacing Hangouts in Gmail. Yeah, and, and I so, think this is more of a kind of semantic type right. thing. There, well, you were just saying, what is Hangouts Meets versus Hangouts versus Hangouts I mean, Chats? And it's all kind of confusing with the naming. So I think they're just rebranding some of this stuff. I'm just making it look like it's something new. Yeah, we're sorry. on to you, Google. Hangouts <laughs> Meet is where you meet virtually, virtually? with another person okay. and you have video and stuff. And, and Hangouts chats Chat. What you use. So then Hangouts Chat, though, is like the little chat menu you have in your Gmail. Okay, moving on. Adding audio to Google Slides. It's for real this time. It is for real, yeah. Yes. Have you used it? Last time I looked, I didn't have it, and I haven't been back in there for a while. So, I mean, I haven't looked for it for a while. I've been in Slides, obviously, but do you have it? I'm looking now. Okay. I haven't looked either. Okay, so one thing I would say about 
um, adding audio to Google Slides is that you have to like record it somewhere else and pull it into Google Slides. I'm hoping that eventually it'll shift to you can just hit the record button and record straight into Google Slides instead of having to record it somewhere else and as a file and insert it in. I mean, I'm not complaining. I think it's amazing we can now add audio, but I hope that that's their next step is being able to add audio straight into Google Slides. That's what we do on this show, isn't it? We talk about all these great Complain? features and oh. say, and then, but what would be really <laughs> well, we good? We really want this. <laughs> yes. I'm excited about it, though. I think it really opens some um, more opportunities with Google Slides. And I don't believe, can you insert audio into Google Drawings? I don't believe you okay, can. Just no. check it. Let's just check him. <laughs> Slide or die. Okay. So, yeah, I do not have that option yet, um, oh. but I'm hoping it will come soon along with Priority Drive <laughs> and all the other things we're missing. So, should we say that we feel like because we um, disclosed what Priority Drive looked like that now Google has slapped our hand? We're not getting any of these updates now. <laughs> we, they took away our Priority Drive. We don't have it anymore. We have not gotten it back. So, we feel like Google is mad at us. We're sorry, Google. We apologize. Let us have the new stuff. Yes, because we don't have priority drive yet. We right. don't have scheduling, scheduling Gmail. Gmail messages. We don't have other stuff on there, too. Yeah. So, so send it our way. <laughs> it's either that or one of us had been in the dashboard and, and clicked with, something we shouldn't have clicked. Looked. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know what's going on, but we're not getting any of those things. Anyway, I'm sure they're great. Yes. Can't wait to have them. Moving on. You okay. can also... <laughs> edit office files in docs, oh, yeah, sheets, yeah, yeah. and slides without having to convert them first, mm -hmm. which I think is good because yep. the problem you always used to have was you'd upload this beautifully formatted Word document and yep. Google would screw all the formatting up and mess everything up and people would go, oh, now yeah. it's more, more hassle than it's worth. But right. you can just edit them straight away now. Mm -hmm. So that's good Yeah, for those people nice. that need that. Yeah, absolutely. Let you kind of... We always... I, I always kind of poo-poo on people who try to live in both worlds. I was like, you sometimes you just got to make the jump, right? You got to yeah. live in one place or the other. But this really does kind of flex those two worlds together. So, Or if, even if somebody is living in a different world right. and sends you that file sure. and you want to keep a copy of that somewhere where the rest of your stuff is. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that was a nicer way to say it. Let's say that one. Okay. So we hinted about this earlier, but uh, there is the ability now to schedule Gmail messages to send later. Yeah. And I feel like I might be the kind of person that uses this because I'm checking my email at like 10, 10.30 10 at night. And then people are like, wait, you're sending me email at this time? And then I can just make it send out at 8 o'clock yeah. in the morning. And it looks like I'm diligently working at the correct hours. Right. Did Inbox used to have this? Could you schedule an Inbox? I don't know. You can't. You could with um, what's it called? Mix Max, right? You could schedule emails. I yes. couldn't remember if Inbox used to have it or not, but I think there are add-ons and services yeah, you could right. do for this. But it's nice to have that as a native feature now. Yeah. What's this customized theme colors and slides? So Tell this me is more. this is new. Okay. And it lets you come in and you know you can choose a theme from yeah your normal um, theme pickers on there. <laughs> But theme pickers? I'm going to call it a theme picker. Okay. I can get on board. <laughs> but you can go in and uh, create and customize what some of those accent colors are oh. or what the background colors are or what the I don't know, title font colors are and, and different things like that. Do you have this? It just came out very recently this okay. week. So I have not checked to see if this I'm one's wondering, in here yet. So since um, we don't have this, I'm wondering if it themes colors kind of like... Um, Spark does or Adobe Spark or Canva does where it gives you like, here are the colors that go together. You well, know? you know, part of it is like, you know, when you, um, I don't know, you create a custom color for yeah, something right. and you like copy the color code yeah. from somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, when you go to the color picker down at the bottom, yeah. it says custom and it's got those yeah. theme colors. Mm -hmm. You can change those theme colors in there too. I see. And add those up as you want to. Okay. Sounds good. All right, and then um, save time with new scheduling features and calendar. So these came into my inbox this morning. This is a last-minute addition to the show Ooh. notes, Mindy. Okay. Um, so they've got a way to let you 
take um you know how you can search for other people's calendars yeah and, and oh yeah add I'm, them yes calendars on there yes. well you can have like a, a temporary way to automatically add new calendars you can just like search for someone's name yeah and then their name will their calendar will just appear overlaid on top of your calendar oh and without adding them you know just yeah because i have like three thousand calendars and not yes. really by choice but because i was looking to see if someone was available you know yes. what i mean and now they're always so it's exactly for for that kind of scenario yeah, you know nice. who yeah. is available yeah and the other thing that they're going to be adding and we'll get it maybe next year yeah. <laughs> is you know how when you click and drag on the um on the calendar to and you get that pop-up box we're doing a quick ad for yeah. a calendar thing yeah. you're now going to get more fields so you'll be able to um access things like guests rooms location oh. conferencing and description inside that little pop-up which is now kind of bigger pop-up because okay. normally you had to click more details to go in and add a right. location or invite guests so they're taking things the like things that. from the more details prompt and putting them in the quick prompt yes right which is good i think it's so. gotten better anyway they just they just kind of revised that not that long ago but there is one thing on it that i'm like oh i wish this was in here and i can't remember what it is but that's good because you can add guests from that the quick prompt now got one more that came in okay. my inbox this morning which yeah. is improvements to organizing oh. and finding team drives well, team drives need some improvements so what are they well team drives i think for some people was always one of those things where you could say yeah i completely messed up my google drive i'm going to start again with team drive right. and make mm -hmm. it more organized and i think people are now starting to go crazy with team drives because yeah. one of the options you have now is being able to hide team drives that you no longer need oh. so if you're part of a project mm -hmm. or a, something sure. that you no longer need to be a part of you can yeah. hide it so that oh, you nice. don't have to see that there you also have a new option for searching for documents because Searching for files inside a team drive was kind of different because if you like search by owner, the team drive is the owner. owner. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you can search by something called a creator. No oh boy. I know. And I think it's getting a little more complex. And they're trying to make it easier, but I'm wondering if it's going to be more complicated. So I would be, be a new search option. So if any of our listeners are using team drives, besides like some of the ways we're seeing people use them are um, like within school systems of sorts, right? If they're creating like proficiency, something that has to live within school property yeah. of sorts. If you're using team drives in some other powerful way, would you please tweet us and let us know? I am really curious if people have found like a great use for team drives besides something like that, because you can't share out of team drives either, which totally doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I don't know. So if anybody's, I would love to hear it or tweet me. I just want to, I want to know what you're doing with team drives. All right. Okay. Last but not least, right. um, this is kind of follow up, but also Google News too, okay. because uh, Jen Giffen was listening to the podcast and said, "Hey, I hear it's going to be the year of spreadsheets for you," oh. and <laughs> <laughs> provided a helpful resource. One of her presentations that oh, she nice. gives is called "Unlocking the Not So Small Powers of Google Sheets." Oh wow! So I'm going to link that in the show notes for okay. anyone else that might want to take a look. I think it's a really nice introduction to some of the things you can do in. Uh, Google Sheets like some of it is she's got a, a slide here called the language of sheets like what all this stuff is called like what a row a cell a column oh, a sure. function and mm -hmm. where all the things are and just some basics like that are really good to have but yep. then she's got things split into you know basics and then level up and then pro for different oh. types of nice performance Thanks, things Jen. you might do with a Google Sheet giving Wiley a leg up do you have it starred in your drive I have it in a... Is it a blog post? I have it in a team drive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No one else will get to see it then. Okay. Thoughtful. All right. So moving on to our main course um, is all about typing, right? Yeah. I have been asked this several times recently. And Maybe we you should know give what? some background about why we're being asked about typing. I think it just comes in cycles for a while yeah. and every so often people will be like, yeah, we need to do more typing with our kids. And yeah. I think the reason is standardized testing. Yeah. So yes. Iowa recently um, changed from Iowa Test of Basic Skills then to Iowa Assessments then to now it's called ISASP. Correct. Did I say it right? All the letters I think so. make ISASP. 
Um, and so what our students are required to do now is um, provide a writing portion to the test, but they don't handwrite it. They have to type it. And so we have um, third graders who are um, starting in third grade expected to, you know, write a new piece of information and have to type it, too, as their way of um, sharing back to the, I don't know, test checkers. And so we have lots of school districts now that are concerned because they're not teaching typing at such a young age. And it's been they're very concerned about how taxing it is on our students to do both of those things. Mm -hmm. So as a team, we've kind of started having some discussions um, about this and we've kind of I don't know. I I actually um, possibly changed my opinion about this yesterday. Oh, this could be interesting. I know. So to start, I would say that um, in the past, my opinion has always been that typing should be embedded into what students are doing. And um, yesterday I happened, I was just kind of reading other people's opinions about it because sometimes that helps me really clarify what my opinion is about things. Be like, I strongly disagree with this or, Oh, I hadn't thought about it this way. And, um, I always have had the opinion that digital tools, like if you have a, um, like a really rigorous lesson or learning that students are doing, you should have a lower tech option, right? So you shouldn't give them a new tool to, to learn, as they're sharing something that's highly rigorous, mm -hmm. right? Because it's overtaxing. So something that I read, which was interesting, was if we're embedding typing into um, the learning environment where the kids are, you know, typing out a paper or they're doing this or that with it, it's also overtaxing them because, A, they don't know where the letters are at, they are worried about doing the home row and, you know, the teachers are saying, you need to use the home row, you need to use the home row. And they're also trying to create something on top of that. And it's interesting because I'd always kind of had that opinion about it, but I had never put place that opinion in with typing. And so it really made me start to rethink like, gosh, should we be teaching typing? Right. And I would say my opinion before also was how long are keyboards actually going to be around? Like mm -hmm. we look into the future, voice typing, kids are using their phones. T that's totally different typing. That's thumb typing. So then what happens with our elementary students who a lot of our elementary schools are using iPads? Yeah. Right. So yeah. I don't know. But what I did think was interesting, too, and I do firmly believe this, is that K through two, it really should be about students just knowing where the letters are at on the keyboard. Uh, yes. And then eventually moving so that they're just using their left hand for the left hand side of their keyboard and their right hand for the right side of their keyboard. But it shouldn't be home row because students' hands aren't big enough to actually type. Keyboards aren't made for small hands. Those full size keyboards are, yes, yeah, definitely not what I would suggest or developmentally appropriate for those kinds of kids. Right. Um, although, you know, things like iPads do have smaller yes, they do. keyboards on them yeah, if they, they are do. using iPads in, mm -hmm. in lower grades. But yeah, it just depends on the type of keyboard that they are they're looking at. So I don't know, I guess my maybe if I play devil's advocate to your Absolutely. to your opinion there, yeah. but we always have this um or we, we start to have, develop this philosophy where we're not teaching tools in isolation. Mm -hmm. Right. Where, you know, we're not, this is how to use Google Docs. We don't say this is how to do Google Docs. We do this is how you use Google Docs as part of what mm -hmm. we're doing in social studies right. or, or right. whatever. Right. How do you, how do you, how do you settle against that kind of side of the deal? Well, the truth of the matter is, though, is that I do, I have always felt that you should never introduce a tool and then say, now, here's the tool, go use it. I think what you need to do is allow kids to be in there and playing and discovering things with the tool first before you expect them to go and use it in some meaningful way because you don't want them learning the tool and use it and trying to portray their learning at the same time. I don't think that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I think that it's important to be very strategic about how you're having students do their typing, right? So, um I, I guess the one thing that kind of struck me as I was reading this, too, is that um, typing is more about muscle memory 
right? So Mm -hmm. you can learn how to ride a bike when you're a kid and you will always know how to ride a bike. And it's the same thing with typing. The kids shouldn't have to do like this, they call it subvocalation. Is that right? Subvocalation. Um, That they shouldn't, as they're typing, be thinking S, left ring finger, strike. They should just think S and their finger should just type it, right? But if you don't actually teach the technique, and I don't... I think it's important too to say that not all students need to be hammered down. Like you have to use the home row. What I do think is that we need to be very understanding that some kids are going to type a little bit differently than others. Mm -hmm. So hammering down the home row and making sure you're doing it exactly the same way as everyone else isn't fair to kids either. I've seen lots of adults finger peck and do it very efficiently. So would it be a fair comparison to say something like, I don't know, when you are teaching kids how to write or how to form letters, Mm -hmm. you're not necessarily also teaching them how to write sentences at the same time. That's exactly it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, just one step at a time, concentrating on that one skill. And when they have a little bit more, you know, keyboarding skill or comfort level or proficiency, then you can introduce a bit more of that embedded Absolutely, and I, and, one of the things I saw, too, is about how important technique is also for carpal tunnel. When you think about how much we use our keyboards yeah. physically, it's important for us to type correctly or we probably would deal with carpal tunnel more than maybe we already do. But um, it's really about it, technique, but it's not yet about accuracy or speed until much, much, much later in your school career. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's interesting because, you know, the, there's always the debate, like, uh, when do you start yeah. typing and teaching? And we have some tools and things that we could probably point you in the right direction. Sure. Of, but yep. I think I think you're right. And like K through two, even maybe. Yeah. That is, it is just about that familiarity. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when they're they have to log into their Google account or they have to whatever. They need to have sure. some kind of familiarity yeah. with where keys are in the keyboard because... Mm-hmm. We teach them ABC order for like yes. the first three years of school or whatever. And then we throw a QWERTY keyboard at them that yeah. doesn't look anything like that. Right. And Absolutely. it makes no sense to them. Mm-hmm. And they're not typists. They're not typists. They're not using typewriters, which yeah. is what the QWERTY keyboard was invented for. But it's uh, it's a legacy of, of those days gone by. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just having, you know, like you said, I think left hand on one side, right hand on the other side, even two finger typing yeah. over like one yeah. finger typing yeah. is just getting you into the ro- the rote habit of two hands. Yeah, going at yeah. the same time, right? Yeah. Which is also actually an important life skill as well. If you want to be so. a drummer, you have to be able to have your left hand and right hand going at the same time. The other thing I think is interesting, and I think Gina Rogers hates when I, I bring this up, but I'm just going to throw them out there. Okay. But our... Iowa Common Core has references for yeah. typing yeah, and recommendations do. for students. Yeah. And that starts at third grade, yeah. which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are writing standards in ELA uh, curriculum. The typing is within writing? Was yes. It, is in, are you serious? It's a writing production standard. Okay. So writing 3.6 mm-hmm. uh, with guidance and support from adults. Uh, students should use technology to produce and publish writing parentheses, using keyboarding skills, Mm -hmm. as well as to interact and collaborate with others. Mm. So that's just first time I think it gets introduced. By fourth grade, they have to um, have a sufficient command of keyboarding skills to Mm. type a minimum of one page in a single sitting. Are you kidding me? That's what it says. That's ridiculous. What, What is one page? What is a single sitting? Yeah. What is the line spacing, the font size? I I don't know. I mean, that's all undefined on there. It's pretty loosey-goosey. Yeah. By fifth grade, that goes up to a sufficient command of keyboarding skills to type a minimum of two pages. And the sixth grade standard says sufficient keyboarding skills to type a minimum of three pages in a single sitting. Which is nuts. Well, and I'm trying to find what this where I saw this at, but um, one of the suggestions was that like students, young students should be able to type like, I think it's one word in a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And then by the time that they reach like second grade, it's like three words in a minute. Mm-hmm. And then we say, oh, in third grade, we're going to need you or fourth grade, we're going to need you to type a whole page of words. In a single sitting. And don't get up. <laughs> don't you get up and take a break. Oh, no. Single sitting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know it's what that means. It's very... Yeah. You'd it's, have to interpret yes, that your own absolutely, way, I guess. Absolutely. 
But and how th- big is the font? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or the lane spacing, or, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. Does it include space for a picture at the bottom? Yeah, or? right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can I write my name really big, type my name really big at the bottom? Hmm, interesting. So Unrealistic. those are the type yeah. of standards that we have to adhere yeah, to I mean, the best to we can and, and think about using. So that would maybe reinforce the idea that third grade's a good time to start keyboarding and actual keyboarding actual skill like home row keyboarding skills yeah hmm. i don't know it's very interesting i it, you know and then i think too gosh we only have our kids for so long and we have so many things that we want to teach and work on that adding keyboarding on top of it i often think about like importance of instructional time so who who should be teaching oh, can, who yeah, should be teaching a, keyboarding yeah who should be teaching keyboarding? What do I you mean, think? Well, I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think? Okay. Well, I think, okay. you know, these, where we're talking about teaching in elementary and for the most part, I think the teacher may have to find some time to do that. But yeah. I have been in schools where it's become part of like the library media curriculum yeah, right, right. and things on there. I don't, some schools have like tech coaches and things that yeah. will come in the classroom. Maybe they come in specifically for keyboarding yeah. um, and help with that. I don't know. But I don't it's, know either. Yeah. I did um, read from this article from Education World. I think it was this one anyway, that they said that it should be a ch- person who's trained. Yeah. And I thought back because I have wow, taught, who I I have taught keyboarding to kids before. Yeah. And I th- if I think back to what I did, yeah. I didn't do very much. Yeah. I sat them in front of a typing program and right. said, yeah. Go. And yeah. <laughs> I didn't really teach typing and mm-hmm. that's probably my bad, but I don't know. The, maybe, the program, maybe not. The, I mean I, th- I You know. Yeah. It's such but a wishy washy. W- what does a qualified typing teacher I don't know. do? I don't know. I do know that um there are like there's a specific reason that you choose kind of like cursive writing, right? So when you first start cursive writing, um, you start with like the letter L because you use the letter L in lots of different letters mm-hmm. or, and actually I don't know, L and B, I don't know, but, or the letter I, because that same stroke is used throughout um, different letters or the letter O, things of that nature. And I do think, or at least it seems like there is a specific reason why you introduce those. And from what I've read as well, is that a lot of typing programs don't pay attention to that. That instead they use letters um, that will allow kids to type words quicker. So they might do S and then A and then T because you would get a little bit more gratification from actually seeing a word on the page than or on the screen than you would if you had to type like T now why T now why or yeah, something like FG, that. So, FG, yes, FG right. thing. Yeah. 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 So, but know. yeah, I know. I mean, I've, I think I've got, I went around and coach kids on, you know, hand placement yeah, and things right. like that. And mm-hmm. every so often, you know, you'll come up a challenge where you're supposed to like cover up their cover hands. Cover their hands. Yes, yes. And do yep. it blindfolded and yep. things. Make sure they're not looking down at the keyboard yeah, too much. Sure. And they're looking yeah. up at the screen. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of it is, I think, taught inside these apps and programs and yeah. services now. It will coach you right there on the screen to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So you had some tools though, right? Some yeah, because, you know, people will ask. They I mean, do ask. We, yep, want, we, do. Yep. we want some services and things that yep. we can try. Mm-hmm. Um, typing.com, I think, is a, a pretty decent one to come in there and learn to start typing yep. for free. Meum. What's that? You said free meum. It is a freemium type of service. <laughs> yes. This is um, a, this is like news and updates. Freemium. They say tens of thousands time. of schools rely on us every mm. year to get typing done. Okay. So typing dot com is a it's a good URL to have yeah, <laughs> for right. a service like that. Yeah. And you can just uh, jump in there and type for free. Okay. Or pay a little bit of money if you want to. Probably keep track of results and stuff like that, right? Do more of that kind yeah, of report sure. tracking and sure. stuff like that. Uh, another one is Typing Club, which mm-hmm. I think used to be all, used to be the default thing for a lot of schools around here mm-hmm. um, for Chromebooks and stuff like that as sure. well. So a Typing Club is, again, a similar service. I don't mm-hmm. know if there's much to differentiate between these types of things sure. anymore. Right. Um, Typetastic, 
was one I found recently, and I'd actually tried that one with my first grader a yeah. bit because it is more kind of like what you said for younger kids. It's just about keyboard familiarity. Yeah, you're not typing words. You're you know finding letters on the keyboard. Sure. And they, yeah, they have things like I don't know like a construction site where it'll lift a group of letters up off the keyboard, yeah. and you have to try and find where they are and type on them mm -hmm. and stuff like okay. that too. So definitely more built for earlier yeah. uh, kids, and it works on. All devices too. The one I did when I was teaching back in the UK is an interesting one. It's called the Whoa. BBC Dance Mat Typing. Has I love a, your what your notes beside it. It's just free, but with an accent. The accent comes for free, I should say. Yeah. It's awesome. I have had teachers use this one in the US, and yeah. they say it's kind of funny because you know the the characters in the typing program will come on and they'll sing a little song or oh, something sure. uh -huh. but they'll be having uh, like real like scouse accents for like you know mm -hmm. sounding like they're in the Beatles and stuff like that or they'll have like very posh London accents uh -huh. and things like that too yeah. but they're very British accents if oh. you want to try something we'll else just for a bit of fun dabble in the in the accent world in, in the old UK yeah. world uh -huh. yeah and the last one I have on here is edu typing okay which is uh what i've seen a few people using on twitter as well so yeah okay you guess you uh they Some. all this one is a uh, free trial only so oh. it's um it's all paid on yeah. there but they say it's the number one trusted solution for of typing course. of course it is for two million students a year well, mm. okay so there's lots of options on there yeah, i guess right. you just jump on one and see if it's going to meet your needs and yeah. I guess in reference to our last freemium episode, mm -hmm. you know, find the one that will give you the most the that you most. can get for free. Yeah. And then after that, if you feel like you need to pay for it, then you yeah. can look into that as another Absolutely. option. Um, oh, you have another note on here that I think is important. And I kind of alluded to this before, but kind of remembering some options for students who struggle with typing or um are enable even to type mm -hmm. um and making sure that you know those voice to text options um so voice typing in google or um using that on the ipad and accessibility yeah uh like word prediction type of apps are okay. on there too for yeah. kids that are you know when you they're not necessarily typing and copying something right. from, a, from a list, mm -hmm. but they are doing, you know, creative writing or something like that. And those types of apps are good. Uh, clicker sentences and things that will give you word banks to help kids type and put words on a page. Because especially when kids are younger or, you know, kids that do have difficulties with spelling, yeah. typing really can have yeah. slow them down and yeah, things like that so too. Yeah, it's so frustrating or, too for them. Yeah. If they're looking down at the keyboard and they can't find anything and the yeah. letters are just like swimming in front yeah. of their face, yeah. then, yeah, that's not a good thing to have. But there yeah. are options to, to yeah. help support that. And yeah. If we're thinking about all our kids and ways to make them all successful. Yeah. So if you are um, teaching typing in your uh, school or district and you have an awesome system in place, we would yeah, love, love to hear to about hear it, about it and uh, share some ideas because it's definitely something that a lot of our schools are going through right now, as like you said, for mm -hmm. the for our standardized testing and also for our curricular requirements, you know, what is the best way to teach typing? Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Okay, up next, my favorite part of the show, Tech Nuggets. Do you want to go first today? Uh, sure, why okay. not? I will start with a quick one, since we did a whole bunch of Google updates today. I did see this recently. This is the Data GIF Maker from okay. the Google News Lab. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this one? Mm -hmm. It lets you make some data visualizations of data mm -hmm. in some different ways. Yep. So one of them would be rectangles. And the other one is a racetrack. And they also have circles. So it makes me think back to... Well, we talked about create a graph mm -hmm. and that kind yeah. of thing where you, you put in yep. the, the values yep. and, yep. <laughs> yeah, and it made a little graph. So yeah. it's kind of like that where mm -hmm. you, you have some data and you put it in there. You can either have things represented as a percentage or mm -hmm. a numerical value. And it makes this nice little animated GIF where the bars and things all flash in together to to visualize your data. Yeah, it's pretty and cool. You, you can just save it as a GIF mm -hmm. and uh, and share that out with people. Yeah. So, a good one i like it um so i have one that i have no idea where i came across it at um i wish i did know but i found it. it's called myshakespeare.com 
Um, great for teachers, ELA teachers that are sharing Shakespeare, the works of Shakespeare. There are five different plays on here. Um, Hamlet, Julius Caesar, Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and Taming of the Shrew. What's really neat about this, I think, is that it will read it to them so they can play different sections of it and listen to it being read. Um, there are different markers within it. Um, so like, you know, sometimes when you read Shakespeare, you're like, I don't really know that word because either it was specific to that period of time mm-hmm. or because it's just not, you know, it just doesn't make sense or it's very cryptic. Um, so there'll be little markers under it that will say what that word actually kind of is alluding to within that line, which I think would have been really beneficial is beneficial to anyone who is um there's also spots that talk about wordplay so shakespeare is notorious obviously for um taking different meanings of the same word and placing them in to make it mean different things and so it helps identify those spots in his work um and then just other references that might be references to the bible or references to a different Um, work of art or that students might not have that background knowledge too. So it'll show those things. Um, There's also, and I didn't get a chance to listen to this, but they also do character interviews at the end. Um, I watched some of them, but I was off task somewhere Mm -hmm. else that I was. And so I didn't get to listen to it, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, So they have recorded character interviews that you can watch. There's also discussions within it. Um, Things of things like that. And it's all free. So you can um, get in there and take a look at it and see what you think. Um, so that's my Shakespeare.com. It looks like a great um, example of how technology can augment and enrich right. something. Yeah. Yes, because I... And Shakespeare, no less, right? Like, yes. It's like a... When I read Shakespeare yeah. in high school, I would have loved something like yeah, this. Yeah, me too. Yes. Nugget number two from me is a little service called Glide Apps, which I learned about via the TCEA blog. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, TCEA being an ISTE affiliate like iTech and people like that. Yep. Uh, Actually, Josh Allen tweeted out this uh, blog post, but it's about how you can create a mobile app from a Google Sheet in five minutes for free. And this kind of intrigued me, so I I dug in and played with it a little bit. I shared an example at our team meeting for you guys to take a look at. Mm -hmm. But you just literally, you know, choose some column headers and put some information in there. And you connect that Google Sheet to the the Glide Apps website. And it will pull all that in and let you display it like Mm -hmm. a mobile app. And you can save it like a little web app on, on on a mobile phone. Unfortunately, it's not responsive if you try and do it on an ipad you still just Uh, get like a frame of a phone sure but we are always having um teachers Mm -hmm. or kids saying how do i build an app or my kids want to build an app this is a way you could do it for free for nothing with Mm -hmm. just google spreadsheets Mm -hmm. and um, i think it's really curious to think about the possibilities for something like this, yeah. whether you're doing it for a school event or whether you're doing it for like i don't know a teacher website or whether you're doing it for I don't, I don't, all kinds of different things. Yeah. And you what, just need to update the spreadsheet and it will update the app. Automatically, right? Automatically. So would it yeah. work for Choose Your Own Adventure? How do you feel? I haven't played with it at all. And I know that you've gone in and just played with it a little. But I'm just wondering, had you thought about that or not? Would it work for something like that? I'd have to think about that yeah. a little bit more. But um, yeah, no. possibly. It would be kind of a fun thing to do some mm-hmm. afternoon where we're like, we need a brain break. Let's yeah. see if we can do that. They do have a bunch of very creative uh, examples in there that you can go in and look at oh, and most of them yeah. are themed around the office and they oh, have like right. say that. Dunder Mifflin characters yeah. and uh, and things like that like an employee directory and yeah. offices and, and all that stuff that's so, funny so jump in and take a look you can find it at glideapps.com okay um so I actually got this tech nugget from Wiley and it comes from I'm Shana or Shana uh Raymond or Raman gosh Sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Um, And we actually shared this yesterday at Building Bridges and people were excited about it. And it's using images as headers in Google Keep. So if you're a Google Keep user, you know that you can probably pull in an image to a Keep note 
Um, but what you can do is create images to help you organize and you can move your notes around, you know, and keep. So you could actually make like a column header and then place your notes underneath that header. Or um, like I did is I went in and saved Bitmojis and added those as my header. So like for summer camp that's coming up in June, if you're interested, let us know. Um, we I took like a camping Bitmoji. And so that is my um, header. And so it's like a visual cue of, oh, here's, even though I have a pinned too, but um, like Amber and I think Make Innovate Show, I put the logo for our checklist there. So when I... It's right there and I can see it. The building bridges from yesterday. I use that as a um, header too for one of my keep notes. So it's kind of a fun way to add a visual element to keep. Um, it looks kind of neat too when you actually mm -hmm. see it. So there's a blog post here that um, Wiley had shared with us. And uh, she has some other good tips in there with yeah, Google Keep does. too. So mm -hmm. um, even if you're not interested in that, definitely take a look at that link because there's other some other good stuff in there too. Shana is shana teaches on twitter if you want to follow oh, okay. up with great her, so i should too because yeah i find that in our job sometimes it's we you know are involved with so many different things and always trying different things that when i come up with something new i'm like i need to follow that person because it's always fun to be like uh, and i my big thing is using the same tools but in a different way and she nailed it so yes she did i'm i'm appreciative I am at Team Carney on Twitter, and Jonathan is at Jonathan Wiley. Our team account is at DLGWAEA, and you can use our hashtag EdTechTakeout to take the show. If you prefer, you can send us an email to podcast at GWAA.org. So, until next time. This has been the EdTech Takeout. We hope it hit the spot. For more information on today's episode, please visit DLGWAEA.org slash podcast. podcast.